the format of the exam paper. When we discuss the format of the exam paper, the first important point to note is that the format differs from the paper that you have written for ECS 1501. The ECS 1501 was multiple choice questions only. The ECS 1601 paper consists of a written part and then also a multiple choice que um, question part. In other words, paper um, counts 100 marks of which is divided in section A and section B. Section A counts 50 mark and so section B. Section A is divided into four questions. And I'll come back to the four questions in, in a moment. And then section B consists of multiple choice questions. If we return to section A, we said it consists of four um, questions. Now each question is divided in, into smaller subsections sub-questions. But each question deals with a certain type of question. Question 1, name, list, define. All those things that you can just remember. You can learn and just have to give it back. But important, even though it's easy to learn and remember a definition, a definition is very precise. It consists of certain key elements. For example, define the GDP, the market value of all final goods and services produced within the borders of a country during a particular year. Those are the elements form part of a definition. It's important to include all those. So even, even though it's an easy kind of question to answer, it's also easy to make mistakes because you don't concentrate. Question 1, about 10 marks. Then question 2, diagrams. We expect from you to illustrate certain concepts in a diagram or the effect of, say for instance, a change in the tax rate on the equilibrium level of income. Now, the key to answering diagrams is to have practiced them. There's no other way to learn to draw diagrams by actually drawing them. I remember as a child I, I, I wanted to learn to ride my bicycle. So I watched my brother and, 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 and try and understand how he does that. And I got onto the bike and I had all the answers. This is how you do it. Needless to say, I couldn't ride because I didn't practice. If you want to draw diagrams, you must practice them. Question three, calculations. Yeah, we can ask you to calculate the multiply, the equilibrium level of income, the inflation rate, all those calculations. But similar to the diagram question, you can't practice calculations in the exam. Then it's too late. And you can't just stare at a calculation and think, okay, I know how to do this. You must actually do it. Take your pen, piece of paper, sit down, and do calculations. As many as possible. To make you familiar and comfortable with calculations. And then, question four, we ask you to explain. Now, question four of, of section A consists about 20 marks. And this is the, the question that gives the most problems for us as lecturers and also for the students. You have to explain. Explain in words. Write it out in sentences. You have to formulate your arguments. Explain the monetary transmission mechanism. You can't just dot down symbols. The chain of causality, yes. That is an easy way to to remember the monetary transmission mechanism. But you still have to write it out in words. You have to explain it. An increase in interest rate leads to a decrease in investment and so on. And write neatly. 
Question 4, as I've said, about 20 marks. Question 110, question 210, and question 3, also more or less 10. Section A, then, your written um, part of the exam paper. Coming to the multiple choice questions in section B, there will be 40 multiple choice questions, each counting 1,25 marks. And as we show again in the examples that we work through in the exam paper, the key to answering multiple choice questions is to concentrate on what you know is correct. Read the stem. Find the correct option. Ignore the distractors. Concentrate on what you know is correct. Work through the assignment um, questions and so on. Yes, it gives you practice. But those questions, I, I can't think of one of them that will be in the exam. But it will give you practice in the way we ask the questions.